Oh, by the way, nephew, plenty of squigglies getting her ass eaten. What, where? Oh. The other ass eat. Yeah, I, I, I don't know why I thought the other one. Oh man, I always feel bad for Trash here. Of all the deaths in the movie, this one is the cruelest. She admitted earlier that this was her worst fear. When it was just a fantasy, it kind of turned her on. Like a lot. But that arousal was coming from a place of terror. And when it's real, it is not sexy at all. It's kind of like how a person with a rape fantasy doesn't actually want to be raped. They just kind of want to pretend because they got a kink. You know, not for real real, just for play play. Meanwhile, on Return of the Living Dead SVU, the paramedics make an important discovery. You have no pulse, your blood pressure is zero over zero. You have no pupillary response, no reflexes, your temperature is 70 degrees. Are you saying we're dead? No, we're saying you're Lyndon Johnson. What the fuck do you think? Whoa, knock at the door. Better pull out the gun. Freeze, you're dead! Don't shoot you! Are you crazy? Are you on PCP? Why PCP specifically? More important question, why were safety pins such a big fashion accessory in the 80s? Ah, just one of those inexplicable trends, I guess. Don't judge! In a few years, you guys are all gonna be fucking trying to explain why you got ponies on everything. All I'm saying is that in the annals of trendy fashion, there's the regrettable, and then there's fucking virginity insurance. But there's no excuse for that, faux hawk. You gotta commit to the hawk. Come into the hawk, bitch! Meanwhile, the paramedics leave not knowing the danger that's outside. But no time for that now! We gotta close this ambulance door in time to exploit the handicapped! Eh, yeah, handicapped actor almost touched me! You gotta call the police! Oh, hey, Uncle Varney. Oh, hey there! By the way, invited some friends over. Why don't you ask them if they're all on PCP? The answer is yes. Great, zombie Hitler. What's next? Copy over. I'm in this rush. Ten more paramedics. Ten. Uh, yeah, this is dispatch. Could you repeat that? Send more paramedics. Does this sound legit to you? You better do what he says. It sounds like zombie Hitler. Meanwhile, they finish boarding up the mortuary and check on the others. You know, it looks like uh, rigor mortis is setting in. Ah! Rigor mortis? <laughs> what, do you, what do you mean? Rigor mortis. Hey. God. <laughs> You're dead. You're dead, man, and you're gonna turn into one of those Cut things out there! Keep your grip on your shit, Scuzz! Do not make the hawk look bad! Oh, hey, those paramedics arrived. Man, these zombie lurches are everywhere. They run to reinforce the barricade, but one of the zombies gets in, killing Scuzz. But you'll be happy to know that his mohawk went on to have a rich, full life. I heard he's married and has two kids now. Ernie, hoping to understand what is going on, captures the zombie that killed Scuzz and straps it to a table. He asks it, why do they eat brains? And gets a chilling answer. Why? The pain. What about the pain? The pain of being dead. I can feel myself rot. Eating brains. How does that make you feel? It makes the pain go away. It hurts to be dead. Hey, look, man. Fuck this. Yeah, talk. not Michael Jackson is no. getting out of this thriller. Oh, by the way, zombie titty! Mm. Ooh, and speaking of which, looks like we aren't done with Linnea Quigley yet. Man, undead chicks are so much harder than. Ah! Well. Could be worse. Could be Linnea quickly now. Meanwhile, tell why front. I would totally do some hot cougar Linnea quickly action. <laughs> what just happened? At this point, Bert, Ernie, and Spider know it's just a matter of time before Freddy and Frank turn, and they suggest locking them in the chapel. You bastard! Why don't you lock yourselves up? 
We just want to lock them in another room so we can figure out how to get the hell out of here, all right? Tina, that really is a good idea. Why are you treating this like you need her permission? All I'm saying is I think we'd understand if you went Ike on that Tina right about now. Not being able to abandon Freddy, Tina insists that they lock her in the chapel with them. This cannot possibly go wrong. Spoilers, it goes wrong. One thing, one thing only that can leave this world with suffering. What, Freddy? What? Live brain! As things quickly go from bad to worse, Ernie breaks his leg and Bert and Spider decide to make a break for one of the cars. Bert, that favor that you owe me, watch your ass out there. I just love little character moments like that. What the fuck are we gonna do now? Oh shit, we're driving into Thriller. Quick, change it to Smooth Criminal. They crash into the medical supply store and are reunited with Casey and Chuck. The fucking car is total, man. That's all right, my car's still out there, and so is Frank's. Well, Michael Jackson's on fire again. Back in the mortuary, Tina and Ernie try to get away from Freddy by heading into the attic, and Frank makes a noble sacrifice. This scene, arguably the most emotional moment of the film, was suggested on set by James Karen, the actor that played Frank. Everything from the self-immolation to taking off his wedding ring was his idea. When he first suggested it, Dan O'Bannon asked Karen, okay, um, but how does Frank even know how to work the crematorium? And then James Karen, in a moment of brilliance, came up with this line on the spot. Some big favor. I can operate that goddamn thing. You gotta have a good script. But sometimes the best stuff ain't even on the page. With the zombies killing everyone that tries to help them, Bert does the only thing he can think to do and calls the number on the canister, hoping the army has a plan. They do. Hey, listen. And as the ashes of the town rise into the sky, the whole thing starts over again. Literally, this is the same footage from before. And that's the movie! It's nihilistic as fuck, but undeniably energetic and entertaining. And that's why it's the quintessential 80s zombie movie. I don't take anything back, the 80s were a complete blast. But it was kind of that way because you had an entire generation of kids growing up pretty much believing we were not going to live to see 30. How could we? Nuclear war didn't just seem like a possibility. It was an almost certainty. And if the nuclear blast didn't get us, toxic waste or acid rain would. It just seemed like society was going to collapse somehow. And when you grow up with that, what are you going to do? Well, you're going to make love and party till you die. It's a strangely pessimistic yet life-affirming attitude that I think we would do well to remember in the modern age. It's clear through watching the movie that Dan O'Bannon's sympathies firmly resided with the punks, as he was never one to blame outsiders for the evils of society. I mean, I was tired of seeing punks portrayed in movies and television as villains. I knew punks. They were the nicest people in the world. He recognized that if the kids around him were angry, self-destructive, and doing drugs, they only did so because they felt like the living dead, just looking for something to ease the pain of living, just as his zombies craved brains to ease the pain of being dead. A clear metaphor for drug addiction it could not be. Which is not to say that Dan O'Bannon was anti-drug, Far fucking from it. That guy is famous for getting high with some of the most influential artists of his day. For instance, he got so high with Alejandro Jodorowsky that it literally changed the face of cinematic storytelling. This 
a special marijuana. I said, oh boy. Seriously, if those two men had not gotten high together, most of the movies you know and love would not exist. But that is a tale for another time. Speaking of another time, I think I'd rather remember the best parts of the 80s than relive them with the worst. So long, 80s. Maybe I'll come back someday. It's just not the same. Hello? Hi, is this Count Jackula? Yeah, who's calling? It's Scuzz's Mohawk, man! Oh shit! What up, brother? Oh, you know, getting ready for Halloween, taking the kids trick-or-treating with the wife. I uh, heard you got married. Yeah, can't be a free hawk forever, dude. Oh man, who is the lucky lady? Linnea Quigley's vagina. Hey, Jackula! Ooh, still got think redheads, huh? You know it, brother. Well, man, just wanted to call up and check to see if you'd be at the Ramones reunion tour. Wait, aren't almost all of them dead? Yeah. Remember, kids, the 80s are dead. They just smell. I want you to seduce me with your terror in the cold. Make love and let me bleed to death before I get too old. I am not your enemy, and surely not.